This is our last chapter section, 7.7, .7, Solving Radical Equations and also Inequalities. First of all, a little bit of a warm-up. I'm going to go ahead, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to go ahead and simplify these radicals and get them in radical form. So they are right now in fractional form. Convert them to radical form, and I will reveal the answers in just a moment. Okay, hopefully you've worked them out. Here are the results. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x to the one half, x to the one half, to, to rationalize the fractions, and I would end up with the square root of x over 5x. 64 to the two thirds. I have to remember that 64 is 8 squared. Um, raise that to the two thirds, um, or that 8 squared is also 2 cubed. Uh, so combining all of those fractions, I get 2 to the 12 thirds, or 2 to the fourth, which is 16. Um, pause, go back and think about that and make sure that you can reduce that fraction to uh, 16. You might have found another technique to do it. Finally, x to the one-third, x to the one-fourth, I'm going to have to change those to fractions that can, um, I'm going to change those into fractions, uh, common, common denominators, so x to the four-twelfths, x to the three-twelfths gives me x to the seven-twelfths. Um, I've got some weird little lines in here, not sure why these are even here. I'm getting rid of them. Um, so I end up with uh, x to the 7th raised to the um, 1 12th or the 12th root of x to the 7th. Okay. So, new stuff. When solving a radical equation, an equation with a variable under a radical, so here we have an equation with a variable under the radical, we must clear it by squaring or cubing both sides. The key is to isolate the radical before you do the squaring or cubing. Um, so we want to get the radical part, this part, all by itself. And we have to manipulate the equation until we do. And then we're going to square both sides to get rid of the radical sign. So let's go ahead and give it a try. 2, to get rid of that 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. We'll get the square root of 3x plus 4. That's going to equal 17. I'm sorry, 7. Now I've got the radical isolated. I can go ahead and square both sides of that equation. I square both sides, and I'm going to get um, 3x plus 4 on the left, and then 7 squared, or 49, on the right. Now it's just simple algebra. Subtract 4 from both sides, and then divide by 3, and I will get x equals 15. Now, when you are dealing with solving equations of radicals, you always want to check your answers because you can actually get extraneous solutions, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But let's go ahead and plug in our answer, x equals 15, back into our original equation and see if it does work. Verify that it's correct. When I work through the, the calculation, yes, it is correct. It does check. The next couple are going to check, but they're pretty soon I'm going to have one that does not. Okay, so let's try the next one. Cube root of 5m plus 2. Now, I want it. it's already isolated, but this isn't a square root, it's a cube root. So now in order to solve, I want to cube both sides, raise it to the third power, and then I'll get 5m plus 2 on the left and 27 on the right. Now it's simple algebra. 5m equals 25, m equals 5. Again, check. Plug that back into the original equation. See if it works. Cube root of 5 times 5 plus 2 equals 3. And it checks. OK. Multiple radicals. Now, this is where it gets tricky. If you have two equations with radicals under the denominator, I'm sorry, with, with variables under the radical, two different equations with the variables under the radical, then you want to clear one of them Isolate one and clear the radical, and then you have to isolate the other one. So it takes a couple of steps. You can't just square the left side and suddenly the radicals will go away. Um, if, you'd, if you foiled it out, you'd see that you'd have radical terms left. So we're going to isolate one radical and then clear it and then isolate the other. Okay, so I isolate the left one by taking this square root of x and moving it to the other side. Now, I'm going to square both sides to clear the radical. So I square both sides, and I'll end up with, on the left side, x plus 12. And on the right side, I have to FOIL it out. So I get x plus 12 on the left side. I FOIL out the right side, and I get 2, I'm sorry, 4, 
plus 4 square root of x plus x. Now I still have a radical that I haven't cleared, so I want to isolate this radical all by itself, and then I'll square the whole thing again. So I get, uh, when I've done that, I'm going to get 8 is equal to 4 radical x. Again, i got to divide both sides by 4, and I'll get radical x is 2. Now I'm ready to square both sides, and I'll get x equals 4. Again, check your results. Always important whenever you're doing solving equations with square roots. So I plug in 4 plus 12 minus the square root of 4, and does that equal 2? Well, if you work out the math, square root of 16 minus 2 is 2, and yes, it is true. So that one does check. Good. Okay, sometimes you do have extraneous solutions, so this is the case where you will. Let's go ahead and isolate the radical. The square root of x plus 1 is equal to negative 6. Well, that should be the red flag, because when you see a little negative sign, and then you're going to be squaring it, that might introduce an extraneous solution. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides, see what happens. I get x plus 1 on the left, and I get 36 on the right. I solve for x, and I get 35. Now... Let's go ahead and check the answer. Check it. 8 plus the square root of 35 plus 1 is equal to 2. 8 plus 6 equals 2, and that is not true, so we'd say that x equals 35 is an extraneous solution. All right, moving on. So you always want to check just to make sure you don't get an extraneous solution. Now we're going to talk about inequalities. Radical inequalities are solved in two parts. So the first one is to restrict the domain. When we first started talking about radicals, we talked about how the, the value underneath the radical has to be positive in order to get a positive square root. So the principal root, this, this value, 4x minus 5, has to be greater than 0. So that's the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to restrict the domain and see what, uh, what that would be. So we do that by saying 4x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Solving, we get 4x is greater than or equal to 5, or x is greater than or equal to 5 fourths. Okay, so that's the first part of our solution. For the rest, we're going to go ahead and isolate the, isolate the, um, the radical, and then square it to clear the, the, the radical sign. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I'll get square root of 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 7. Now I can square both sides. 4x minus 5 squared, 7 squared, and I'll get 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 49. Solving algebraically, get the x all by itself. 4x is less than or equal to 45. I'm sorry, 54. I added 5 to both sides. And x is less than or equal to 54 fourths, or 27 halves. Okay, so now I have two different um, inequalities. I have x is greater than or equal to 5 fourths, and x is less than or equal to 27 halves. So I've got to put those on a number line, and I'm going to say that x is l less than or equal to 27 halves and greater than or equal to 5 fourths, so it's going to be that area region in between the two. And I'm going to have solid circles on either side because they are both less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So I'm going to make that a little darker right there. I'm going to a little darker uh, circle there. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Square root of 2x plus 5 minus 11 is greater than or equal to negative 8. First thing I want to do is uh, restrict the domain. So I'll look at what is underneath this radical and make sure that that is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So I'll get 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. 2x is greater than or equal to negative 5, x is greater than or equal to negative 5 halves. That's the first part. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and solve the equation by isolating the radical. I'll add 11 to both sides, and I'll get square root of 2x plus 5 is greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, it's just greater than, 3. Now I can square that to get rid of the radical, and I'll get 2x plus 5 quantity squared is greater than 9. 2x plus 5 is greater than 4, x is greater than 2. Now, let's put those on a number line. I know that x is greater than 2, and x is greater than negative 5 halves. So negative 5 halves is over there, and 2 
is over here. I put an open circle because it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. Now, I want x is going to be greater than negative 5 halves, but it also has to be greater than 2. So really, the x is greater than 2 is going to supersede the other expression because if you're greater than 2, you're also greater than negative 5 halves. So I would say that x is going to be greater than 2, and I'll graph it like this. So x is greater than 2 is going to be my final solution. And that concludes this lecture.